Streaking across the skies to punctuate South Sea's commemorations, the Red Arrows. Watched from the waves by the next elements in this European series of military manoeuvres, a flotilla. A procession of Allied vessels making the journey across the Channel, each in tribute to their own nation's contribution seven decades ago. The Royal Navy's flagship HMS Bulwark is at the head of this flotilla and she's followed by an equivalent landing platform dock from the Royal Netherlands Navy, the Johan de Witt. Third in line is the French replenishment tanker, the Somme. That class of vessel is named after rivers. Then following those is a Norwegian frigate and a Danish coastal patrol craft. As Normandy nears, the fleet flagships embarked, Sea King is in demand, with tasks including shuttling dignitaries around the many memorials on shore throughout this historic weekend. As D-Day plus 70 years dawned, landing craft deployed from the flagship's dock, ferrying sailors and marines ashore at Aromanche. A sense of history in the air and much reflection on how it must have been for their forebears. Someone who could tell them all about it is Admiral O'Brien. 997, he believes he's the only surviving captain of a vessel on Operation Neptune, the naval element of the Normandy assault. That was very exciting, actually, because the, the noise level was colossal, so you couldn't avoid being elevated by it, so to speak. And, all, and this amazing mass of seasick soldiers going by, by you in their small craft, and they did look very seasick. Felt very sorry for them. And uh, you expected to be blasted out of the water any minute, and you weren't. So that was satisfactory. The former, in fact the first Commander-in-Chief Fleet, is a guest at the ship's company's own remembrance service. They sit off Sword Beach for a unique perspective on the main commemoration events there. I wanted to ensure that, that all of my ship's company got the experience of the commemorations. It could be the last uh, large-scale D-Day commemorations um, with the Normandy Veterans Association um, laying down their colours in November and disbanding. Um, it could be the last opportunity for my ship's company to wish, witness that. Another D-Day veteran, a Royal Marines landing craft coxswains, found this trip back to the beaches more poignant than previous ones. Those had been arrivals by land, but modern-day Marines treated 89-year-old Bill Bryant to a ride ashore in their landing craft, which brought it all back for him. I'm bloody lucky to be here, like, you know, where a lot of them didn't make it, as I say, and it becomes very emotional, actually. Those left on board to keep the ship afloat were eager to hear from their colleagues about the veterans they'd met and the atmosphere in Aramanche. None could fail to be struck by the contrast in years. They were sure they'd see each of their shipmates safely back on board by nightfall. No one had that certainty on the 6th of June 1944. And all were thankful that because of that day, they could have this one. Julie Knox, Forces News on board HMS Bulwark.